Hello and welcome to MBS Show, episode number 174. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James. Hello. How are you doing, man? Uh, well, it was an in- uh, endless, <laughs> eternal week that lasted forever. Thankfully, it's already over. Mm, all right, all right. Also joining us today is Ro. Hello, all you happy people. How are you doing, man? Awesome, awesome. I got myself a boat. What? Well, a battleship to be exact. What? I've just been gaming with the new game world of oh. warships. Oh, okay. Oh, I tell And you. as a guy who's into 3D modeling, I have such an artistic mind explosion from all the details on the ships and the cannons. And they even added those life uh, circle thingies that prevent people from dying. What do you call those? Life saver, something like that. Not sure, but yeah, so much detail in modeling that uh, I am in love with the hard work that that game is. Well, uh, made by the same people who made World of Tanks. Yep. Mm -hmm. Same guys. Yep, yep. So this week is going to be one of those weeks where we relax and just talk about our stuff, you know, what we do and whatnot. So, yeah, some people may know it as one of those episodes I will insert here. (laughs) So it's going to be an hour and a half long of me just rambling. All right. <laughs> better yeah, pre- better rev the engines. Better rev the engines. Uh, but before you rev that, man, like... Run, 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 run. But before you do that, like, I, I need to say what I've been doing, man. Like, uh, recently the new Magic set came out, uh, Magic Origins, and I went to the pre-release party, and I got a really good box like wow a lot of good cards i just got this for this week like wow i just i am just speechless if you guys play magic you would be happy with me but you don't uh i'm so sad right now <laughs> oh, it's cool it's cool uh but i got my boats you got your cards mm, true uh, when did you start playing that man uh, a couple of days ago when it went out from it, when it went to open beta. Oh. Okay. For that was closed beta. Only the chosen ones may sail the seven seas. Hmm. All right. All right. Having fun? Oh, you have no idea. Mm. I have done nothing but sunken ships for three days. Why would... Uh, okay. No, no comment. No comment. But don't you feel like it's going to be like tanks? It's... Okay. Let's put it this way. It's like tanks only would have... Dark Souls kind of tactics. You gotta be careful. You can't just run in or swim in, in our case, into the battlefield. You gotta be careful because you got, you don't have a lot of speed. You don't have a maneuver- maneuverability. It's like playing chess, like real hardcore chess. You need to think like 10 moves ahead of the opponent. All right, all right, all right. Otherwise, you're gonna have a really bad time. Hmm. So not all really. Right. If you're gonna, if in any case, you will be mesmerized by the explosions! Oh, yeah. Explosions. Explosions are fun. Talking about explosions, James, didn't you watch a movie this week? I went to watch San Andreas, but that's oh, because... Oh, the video game? That's fun. <sighs> no? We in Spain get always screwed over because of the release dates for movies. Mm-hmm. I wanted to go watch Inside Out or not having that on the theaters, going to to watch Terminator Genesis. Mm-hmm. Because those are like the two big movies that people are talking about. Um, went to watch them. Terminator Genesis premiered yesterday. And Inside Out will not premiere until the 17th of July. I want to think that it's because they have to dub the movies into Spanish, which, okay, fair enough. <sighs> then again, it wasn't that big of a loss. The movie was all right, and it was only five euros, which is like... <laughs> Four quids, which is like six and a half US dollars. I mean, when I hear people paying eleven dollars for a movie ticket, that's definitely something that I wouldn't be able to afford. But five euros for a ticket? Yeah, sure. Come bring it in. I, it's no, no big deal. A rental is a lot more expensive. Wow. How come? Because when you want to rent a movie online, there is a lot of fees that you have to pay. I actually do, did the math. Paying for the movie online costed me 7 euros. Going to the theater, even though I have to pay for transportation, it's still just 1 euro worth of transportation and then the movie. So technically 6 to save 1. But yeah. wait, do, don't you have to go back and forth? So that makes I go back euro. by I, I, book, I go back by foot. 
Oh, wait, why? Is it closer? Yeah, it's actually pretty close. The only reason why I pick up the bus is so I don't want to be there late. Ah. Uh, I'm tired. So when I get out of the movie, um, especially now in summer, because the air conditioner in the theaters oh. is like uh, North Pole levels of cold. Oh, God. So when okay. I get out, it's warm and hot oh. and dry, and I'm like, oh, this feels so good. So when I get back home, I actually feel my battery is recharging. Mm-hmm. All right. So about San Andreas, what is it about? It's about an earthquake. It's a disaster movie. It's a oh. classic 1970s, 1990s disaster movie. That's it. Well, I said classic. So oh, it's like it's like one of those classics, but it's not. Uh, they kind of wasted the character of Dwayne Johnson. The Rock oh. could have done a lot more. He's a very likable guy, but he doesn't do anything ultra badass in it. If you want to go watch a movie with Dwayne Johnson being a badass, go watch Fast and Furious Seven. <laughs> All at, right, all right. at the end of the movie, he he gets thrown out out of, out of a building, and he breaks all of the bones in his body. And at the end of the movie, he is like, "I'm not going to stay in the hospital bed." Breaks the case that he has <laughs> his limbs on, takes some painkillers, and starts shooting guys with a Gatling gun. So that's um, Fast and Furious, not that's Fast and Furious. Yeah, that's Fast right. and Furious Seven. San Andreas has him eighty percent of the movie inside a helicopter or inside an airplane. Because he mm. plays a rescue pilot, so he's, uh, he spends the entire movie doing that. Oh, okay, well. but where's the, sh- well, if you can tell me, where's the show located? Like, what's the premise? It's, it's uh, the, the San Andreas, uh, fault that is in California just breaks open and uh, all of California goes down under the sea because of a massive earthquake that destroys absolutely everything. And Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson has to rescue his family before they die. That's, oh, wow. that's it. That, that's that a kind of story. Yeah. All right. Well, talking about California, you know what's also in California? Oh, my goodness. Uh, no. <laughs> wow. What happened in California? San Diego Comic Con. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that was what caused the earthquake. <laughs> well, all those nerds being in one place, stomping their hooves. Well, I say food because there's a lot of things going on there. Like, if you like Star Wars, there's Star Wars. If you like Doctor Who, I'm sure there's something Doctor Who related. And if you like ponies like we do, and here's some good news. Like, last week we mentioned that there's some exclusive pony toys that you can get there. Like the Pinky Pie Chicken, something like that. Pinky Pie. Yep. How, chicken, how do you say it? It's Chicken Pie from the... Yeah. Uh, it's chicken pie from uh, the, the, night, the nightmare, the nightmare, the nightmare yeah. night episode, yes. Yeah. So you got that and also the baseball ponies and whatnot. But here's another thing. If you like playing card games at the same time, they're also giving away, oh, I'm not sure giving away, but you can get the exclusive playmat there. And the pictures on the playmat is the scene from episode 100 where everyone on the warp machine is being flown off to the town hall. Remember that scene? The scene right before Gami starts giving his uh, exi- yeah. existential speech about <laughs> yeah, what yeah. is life. <laughs> and the picture here, I love it. It's so good. Uh, th- this scene itself is just awesome. And well, if you're there and you play card games, just go get it. It's so much fun. I wish I can get it for myself. And also you get a Pinky Pie card that says SDCC 2015. So, yay, awesome. So much awesome. You got a playmat, James? I do have a playmat, but not a My Little Pony playmat. I don't mm. play the My Little Pony card game because I have nobody to play it with, mm. and uh, I didn't bother to learn how to play it. I just like to have uh, cards of my favorite characters, like uh, Princess Luna, right. Twilight, uh, Rarity, all that. Um, all right. Discord, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. but the one game that I play a lot is Magic the Gathering, obviously. So yeah, I do have a playmat of a Magic the Gathering character. It's one of those anthropomorphic rat characters kind of thing, and her name is Inkeyes. Mm-hmm. It was drawn by an artist called Easy Major, and uh, oh. Easy Major turned it into a playmat, and Aces Leaves was super kind, and he bought me the playmat. It's downstairs, it's downstairs right there. I could bust it open and just play some card games with you. Because it's yeah. a really neat playmat. It's one th- one of those that has like a rubber surface, like a rubber base. So mm-hmm. it sticks to any surface. And it's just oh, yeah. so neat. Nice. Well, I, I'm guessing it's just almost the same quality. But I don't know. It's almost the same quality as what they have here. So it's going to be fun. But James, if you do consider playing it again, you should get the set. 
that includes four custom uh, D6, one D10, and one D20, and a deck to play. So yay, that's fun. That's not. I'm not sure it's available at San Diego Comic Con, but I do understand that you can get this at any game shop that's available where you can play the card game. So yay. So this is something for new players to get into. Let's see. Six custom dice. Uh, 4d6, 1d10, 1d20, three copies of exclusive foil card, a full play set. Oh wow, that's good. One game mat and, and mouse pad. Wow. And one dice pouch. You know, I want to get this. Like, this is just awesome. Oh, oh, you, you say dice pouch? Have you mm-hmm. seen those new dice that are being, that have been released? Oh, which one? From who? The My Little Pony die. Oh, are you talking about from Enterplay? No? Yes, Enterplay released a couple of a uh, couple of days ago. They released new dice, and they are My Little Pony themed. They are these six dice. Those are the dice with six sides, sides. Mm-hmm. and they are so cool. I, uh, I, 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 I want think one. Look- I think you're looking at the thing that we're talking about, James. The uh, Twilight has a purple die, and the one is her face and whatnot, right? Oh, yeah. That's the yeah, one. So, yeah. yeah. If you don't want to play the game, you can just buy the set just to get some exclusive <laughs> swag. Because Twilight here has, what, a 4D6, and one is Chrysalis, one is her face. I think Mott and Applejack. Oh, Wait, what, her a, face? Well, on the die. You know, die. I know die, you said her face. What's yeah, whose on, face? On the, on the die, Twilight. Oh, right. I oh, thought sorry, you said, I like, a new pony. Like, wait, who's that pony her face? <laughs> who's that <laughs> pony man? <laughs> it's Twilight! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry, not sorry. My apologies. My brain derped. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. But talking about new characters, did you know that Larson found a knockoff of Spike. Ah, you mean oh, Princess God, that, Spike? That no, no. Where's they that call Princess it, no? Spike. Dim soon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's cute. I like her. What? No. Well, she is adorable. She's adorable. She could be Spike's long lost sister, maybe. No, nah, she's I... just a dragon. It could be any random dragon, but no, it's still cool. Oh, according to well, somebody found. Um, dim sum, and well, she's a crystal dragon, and well, I don't know. Uh, there's no name for her yet. There's an update on the Divinart page, and let me try and read it. Uh, edited on July eight, two thousand fifteen. Uh, well, um, seems that some Chinese place used this vector in their restaurant, and Emmy Larson tweeted it. Awesome. In case you want more information, uh, this here is Crystal. Oh, her name is Crystal, not Dim Sum. Oh, okay. Well, if you want, just look in the show note, guys, because I could read all day and you will be bored. So yeah, her name is Crystal the Dragon. But Dim Sum sounds cute. <laughs> yeah, more oriental, like dragons are supposed to be. True, true. But wow, who would have thought, eh? Art being used and then... <laughs> what do you think, man? I think that whoever came up with that uh, is the same person that did the the bootlegged ponies. Really? Yeah, because I think I don't know who it was, but somebody found um, somebody found a My Little Pony backpack that had like a, the the friendship is witchcraft version of Twilight Sparkle or something like that. Hmm. Or the 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 Applejack version of the Applejack Applejack version of Friendship is Witchcraft. I think. Uh, I don't think so because. Well, looking at her page or the person's Urgul3003, yeah, Urgul, she, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not, du- I'm speaking well, I'm very derpy right now. But yeah, she, from what I can see on her gallery, she doesn't have any description of what you do. Basically, she's just a normal artist who just draws vectors. And besides that, nothing much. Like what your backpack saying? I I think it's another Chinese knockoff place who just use art, you know. Yeah, it's I guess because it's fan made and it's not copyrighted, they are safe to use. So that's probably one of the dangers of putting your artwork on the internet. It's actually something that I encountered the other day. Uh, mm-hmm. Big fan of the show, Puffy, actually, mm-hmm. directed me to this. Somebody from oh, Caltech really? was using Movie Slate as their avatar. 
Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, she directed me to their website and all that, and she's like, hey, look at that. Somebody's using movies like as their avatar. And I'm like, are they claiming that they own it or something? It's like, no, it's just there. Do you want me to report it? And I'm like, yeah, you should, because I didn't give permission for anyone to use that. So I was kind of shocked. I was like, that's not a word. What the hell? I don't know, man. Like, eh, I, I guess, but still, no, no, no idea. But saying something like that means your art is awesome and somebody likes it so much to use it as their avatar. <laughs> it's. I hope. I don't know. Yeah. You know that they say yeah. that. What, what do they say that something something is like the the the, the biggest uh, show of flattery or whatever? Uh, I think imitation uh, is the biggest the, show is the biggest representation of flattery. Form of form flattery. Of flattery. Yeah. Uh huh. And they call it an homage. Yeah. No, I don't believe. <laughs> this is true. True. Uh, we didn't run out of ideas. We just want to homage Ben Hur. Okay, George. <laughs> yeah, okay, right. George. Whatever you say. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, usually movies or anything like that, they they have ideas and whatnot. And sometimes, when if they're brave enough, they put it in art books, like certain movies. Like you, you said that you have the Alien art book, and also what other art book? Oh, I have, have a bunch. I have the. I have the the art book of Alien, the ba- the art book of Bioshock Infinite, Mass Effect, the, the entire trilogy, uh, Guardians of the Gal, Gar- no, no Guardians of the Galaxy, no Le- Rise of the Guardians. I get confused. Uh, don't blame <laughs> me. There are like three or four movies with Guardians in the title. Oh, tell me about it. Like <laughs> someone uh, mis- uh, accidentally played. Rise of the Guardians in theaters when they were supposed to play Guardians of the Galaxy. That was a mess up. Uh, both movies are excellent anyway, so. You are not true. losing one for the other. <laughs> oh, true that, true that. But yeah, I mean, art books, they are there, they show concept art, like what could have done, and show background pictures, and well, they explain a few things, like my art book of Eyes of Bayonetta, the first art book for Bayonetta 1, and that was awesome. I, I like it, like they showed a few concepts of how they created her and how things change. And as per usual, Coming this year, around October 13, ponies are going to get their own art book. Oh. And it's going to call The Art of Equestria. And from what I understand here is, well, let me see. You know what? Since Rom has been here and I haven't heard him speak, why did you read what it, mean, like, we, what we did you read at the very chapter? beginning when I was talking about warships. <laughs> Okay, let yeah, me... but you haven't been talking you much. You're going to speak. Hang on a minute. Let me go get my pillow. Okay, I'm ready. Go on. No, I'm not going to read a fanfic. That doesn't matter. <laughs> you are so poor. If you are like sleep worthy in every language. It doesn't matter. Hey. On the bright side, I cure, I cure insomnia, naturally. <laughs> and for free. You cure insomnia oh, wow. without using medi- medicine. Yes. Tom Cruise will be, be so proud. Yes, I should get a Nobel Peace Prize or something. Anyway... My Little Pony, The Art of Equestria, presents for the first time a deep exploration of the art and illustrations from this beloved animated series, Friendship is Magic. Beginning with the show's premiere and taking readers through its fifth season, the book offers an amazing collection of the art and design that brings this wonderful series to life. The book takes readers behind the scenes of the show and explores how favorite characters and landscapes of Equestria came to look as they are today. Beyond the television show, My Little Pony, The Art of Equestria also examines the intriguing fan culture, including the fan art movement inspired by Friendship is Magic. With a rich array of conceptual art, episode storyboards, and memorable scenes from the show, My Little Pony, The Art of Equestria is the ultimate guidebook, collector's item, and fan keepsake. Wow, from what I understand here, they're going to feature some fan art work. This is going to be something awesome. That's usually something that few art books do, acknowledge the fandom. I am glad that they are actually acknowledging the fandom. Then again, it's impossible not to acknowledge us. We are like the loudest, most obnoxious fandom in the planet. We are starting to give the Sonic fandom a run for its money when it comes to obnoxiousness. <laughs> Guys watching, don't interpret this as me this in the fandom. I am just self-aware. Sometimes we go way too far when it comes to, you know, interacting with the people behind the show. And more than once I actually wondered what is uh, the what do the showrunners think of us? Uh, weirdos that go on the Twitters and go on the Facebooks to pretty much just talk them. Like, did you, did you guys see what happened with this one person, this one character who said 
they were the writer of uh, Make New Friends But Keep Discord? Uh, no. What happened? Apparently, there was this one person who said, I help write a hippie character uh, with Lauren Faust, and it happened to be Tree Hugger from the season 5 of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Like, prove it. You can check the tweets. The tweets are like, they go way be- way back to like July last year. The tweets exist, actually, but they are tweets for a character for another TV show. And also, you know that Lauren Faust doesn't work for MLP anymore, right? Yeah, that's, that's the <laughs> thing. Like, her name is in the credit as the one who concept everything. Yes, thanks to that. But besides working on season one and most of season two, she hasn't touched ponies at all. This person yep. went as far as harassing Natasha Levinger, who was a real writer for that episode, saying that she stole her idea. And then she went after Megan McCarthy. Oh and, but thankfully, and this is going to sound weird, but thankfully, the guys at Horse News got it covered. Really? Because they were the, gun, the ones who reported it. Now I think the account is gone and the harassing has stopped. But how can someone be so messed in the head to think that just because you exchange a couple of tweets with a person who is writing or working for something, that automatically makes you a collaborator? That, that, you know that that means nothing, right? Yep. Yeah, to to me, I would just be happy saying that, hey, Emmy Larson, here's an idea on a napkin. Oh, you didn't sell anything. Like, I'm going to hand it to you, but nothing's going to happen for real. Like, if the idea works, I'm happy. Yay. <laughs> I could just say that. I'm really happy. Like, he took my idea. Yay. The idea that I want to see on the screen works. Yay. That's about it. But other than that, I'm not going to say that, oh, I help Larson do a comic design or a book design or whatever, like, oh, I should be credited, like, dude, no. Some people like to take it a bit too far. Many reasons for that. Inflated ego, too much time on their hands, they have no idea what else could they do in the world but this. Different reasons. I don't know. Like, if I do, like, if I do manage to help some of the show creators create an idea or something like that, like, even, for example, like, we had Larson on and we talked for hours and we gave him some ideas. Like, if he used our ideas that he got on the show, I say, okay, go ahead. We don't mind. We'll just, we'll just deny that you took it here because, hey, A, we got an awesome episode that we inspired you. B, it's on screen so we can just watch it till the end of time. So, yay. There's no downside to being unknown. Last week we mentioned that Equestria Girls, Equestrian Games, the movie's gonna come out on September 27, I think. Yeah, so we're gonna have that. And Blu-ray's coming out on October 13 by Shout Kids. So, yay! Shout Kids is the kid division of Shout Factory, right? Yep, yep. So yeah, it's by Shout Factory, but I think Shout Kids is their kids division. Yep, that's true what you said, James. Awesome. So yeah, there's going to be out on Blu-ray and DVD on October 13. And also on digital download. So cool. Looking at the trailers, I'm hyped for this. I just can't wait. I just can't wait. This looks like fun. It does look promising. Does look, the trailer does look very interesting. Let's see if the entire movie is as well. May I say something about the, the trailer, the first one? Horses on motorcycles! <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. Well, if you do... Watch the second one that was at San Diego Comic Con. They showed, well, Twilight wearing normal clothing and being weird. Okay. We, we saw that Twilight is going to a prep school. That's okay. And we also see a bit of cadence. Yay! Yeah, but you do Just know that there is, do you know the reason that, mm-hmm. uh, that uh, Twilight is going to a prep school and all that? It's because the, the human version of Twilight, that's science Twilight. That's mm-hmm. the, uh, uh, hopefully, mm-hmm. hopefully, who knows? They will, uh, they will keep this one all within the Equestria Girls universe. That's oh, probably yeah, the that thing thing that I like the most about about Rainbow Rocks was that it took more mm-hmm. place within the the human universe rather than having it start with like the ponies and all that. And it's like, oh, you remind yeah. us of this that we all like so much, and then you throw us oh. a curveball, and oh, okay, you're doing this now. Yeah. All right. I think the whole trilogy for this one is like the first one was the setup to make people understand what's going to happen and part two was okay you you already understand what's going on now let's introduce an element of mystery 
And part three is, hey, you know what's going on. Here's Sunset Shima, your new hero for the show. Here's what I'm thinking in my head. Not true or not from what I can understand. Um, I'm hoping that Cadence is still Celestia's niece. And if I do remember right, they're going to a place called Crystal something. It's a prep school. So yay. And I do hope the principal for that school is Principal Sombra. <laughs> Director Sombra. No, <laughs> it's... So that will be cool. Detention. Uh, <laughs> no, the, the detention is just going up and down the stairs constantly all day. Oh That's my. Detention. Cool. <laughs> detention. My crystal students. <laughs> Do I make myself crystal clear? <laughs> oh God! Oh, you already started the puns. Oh, what the? Why not? Hero. Oh God! But no, this is going to be fun. I can't wait. I oh can't God! Wait. What if it ends with him blowing up? That would be nasty. Oh <laughs> my so. goodness! No. But it's but from the trailers. Well, from the trailers, we saw a lot of things. But officially, we got no idea what's going on. And I prefer to be it that way. Just can't wait. So much hype. Giggle. Yee. Uh, other than that, that's the news for this week, unless anybody else wants to add in more stuff. Yep, I got nothing except for Steven Universe next week, waiting for Monday. Oh, really? Yes. Steven Bomb 3 will start from Monday and go until Friday. Oh, I have seen the commercials. Character. I have seen the bumpers and all that. Are they real? Like, do they really say, prepare the fields, they're going to be shot in Rebecca, don't hurt them too much? Yes, I can't believe that, that actually. Really? Yes, Cartoon Network was real about that. That I can they confirm. They are not. They are not fooling around anymore now, aren't they? They're not. They are like no. The playtime's over. Gonna playtime's over now, guys. This. This, this is what it is. Wow. <laughs> really? I I haven't seen that. I need to see that one. I got a whole oh. box of tissues and the snuggle pillow right next to me for this moment. Only- I just started uh, getting into Steven Universe. I watched, I marathoned the entire, uh, the entire show in like two days, uh, after my friend mm-hmm. Fermin left, uh, back to the US. Yeah. It is, it is a very good show. And I cannot wait for the feels. It's going favorite to be gem? F- f- favorite gem? Okay. Out of the, out of the main three gems, my favorite is Amethyst. Yes! Amethyst Bro! <laughs> my favorite is Amethyst. She's <laughs> awesome. But out of the gems that we barely see, I am sticking with Lapis. Yeah, Lapis is adorable, but I like Peridot. Lapis, Lapis I, uh, Peridot is hilarious. Yeah. Peridot is so useless. I love, I love how useless she is. She's like, she's a girl, right? Uh, no, they're mm-hmm. gems. They don't have gems, but they refer to themselves as ladies. Everybody is going yeah. to now call me out on this. Oh, you're misgendering her. How dare you? Oh, you're an they asshole. They have a gender. They don't have a sex. They're just... All their bodies is an illusion. It's just... It's just yeah, there. their bodies are a, are a representation of the gemstone. The real thing is... The, 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 the real them is contained inside the gem that they have. Yeah. I know mm-hmm. I know that much. <laughs> but Peridot <laughs> is so funny in that she is always getting something wrong. And I love the voice that they <laughs> gave to her. It's, it's awesome. It's, it's like, what? She's like a Harley Quinn. She's like a Harley Quinn. Mm-hmm. And not Harley Quinn from Batman, I mean like a Harley Quinn. You know? Mm, the yes. clown. And the right. fandom has already proclaimed her to be the meme lord. <laughs> oh, Especially that famous wow. scene where she was in the spaceship. It was like, go to Earth, they oh. say. It'll be easy, they say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, that scene. No one but I failed one reason. thing. But I failed one thing to understand mm-hmm. with the fan. Like, why do they think she looks like a Dorito? Because of the triangle hair. It's not yeah. triangular! <laughs> she said it's a square turned to 45 degrees! Well, and it's Doritos green! That way. Doritos are orange! No, 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 look at the hair mane, whatever you want to call it. Dorito looks that way. Uh, I know, I don't know, I never had a Dorito. It's just a triangle corn chip, that's about it. Okay, whatever rocks the fan of the boat, I guess. It's just, I don't see a Dorito, I see something like a Mega Man. Villain, but only a bit more cooler. Well, it's there, it's there. And, oh, James, you've been marathoning season one, right? Uh, and, well, and you two. also watched season uh, one, right? Both. Yeah. What do you think of the animation? Like, the drawing style? It really evolves, Indeed. right? 
Like any artist, with each new stroke, the thing, the picture gets better and better. You know, I've been watching. Uh, after watching this, I finally got time to pick up uh, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. Oh wow! Well, I got, I got, I got the first season on DVD actually, and uh, I got it seven years ago, and I have been unable to watch it until now. And oh, wow. uh, I have been watching it, and I realized, yeah, there is a lot of nostalgia glasses going on here. There are a lot of things in this in this cartoon that doesn't really work. But the animation is spectacular. Like, Disney mm-hmm. animations, Disney television managed to put the same level of quality at small scale for their TV shows that they did for their, uh, for their movies. And few, few TV shows do that, that thing nowadays. I mean, if you look at shows with uh, stellar animation, I think that the first four that will come to my mind will be uh, Adventure Time, Gravity Falls, mm-hmm. My Little Pony, and Steven Universe. Like those will be the, the first four that come to that come to my mind, and I also mean the ones that are still running. I didn't mention Legend of Korra. The few things that I saw of Legend of Korra are here, they are ridiculously good. Well, the reason for that is most of those kind of cartoons like Korra, I if I do understand right, they were shipped to Korea to be animated. Of course, the same. If I to that's something that I'm not 100% no, sure. that is absolutely correct because that's something that is common practice in the Western world that they will have a great IP but not good enough mm-hmm. animators to make it happen. So what they will do is they will ship it to Korea or they will ship it to Japan and they will have the animation happening in there. In fact, that's what they did with Transformers, the Which original. One? Oh, the, the original one? Transformers. G1? Yeah, G One. It mm-hmm. was animated by Toei. Yeah. Really. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, Toei. I, I do know Toei had a dealing with Hasbro with the toys because uh, in the States, the Transformers toys were done by Hasbro and in Japan, it was done by Toei for licensing Something, issues. Um, maybe people are going to shout me in the comments, but from what I know and from what I heard, the animation of Transformers it may, is made by Toei. Those, because of the, the transformation of the robots oh, and all that, the animators in the US were not talented enough to do that kind of thing. They shipped the show to Korea or to Japan or anywhere. Uh, well, they shipped it to, the, to um, uh, somewhere else to get those animations going. So, yeah, those transformation moments and those fight scenes and all that, yeah. Mm, okay, I want to retract something. Uh, when I say the toys, uh, it's not Toei but Tommy, uh, previously known as Takara Tommy, but now just Tommy. So, yeah, they're doing the toys. So, if you have any Japanese Transformers toys, you see the word Tommy at the label there. So yeah, that's awesome. And what do I, I, well, I'm on a Transformers binge right now and I just rewatched Transformers Robot in Disguise. Fun fact, that animation was done in Japan. And I told you about something, right? One of the Decepticons, Thunderhoof. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you, you know what I'm talking about? I still can't get race. over the fact. I still cannot get over the fact that there is a, a transformer called Thunderhoof, like Chief Thunderhoofs. Mm-hmm. Like Chief Thunderhoofs. And here's the best part. It's voiced by Frank Stallone, Sylvester Stallone's brother. Uh, how did Hasbro get him? Maybe they finally figured out where, Silver, where Frank Stallone was from, from all the screaming and shouting from Spoonie. Oh my! They were like, they were like, ah, there he is. Uh, well, that's awesome. I can't wait for season two. And wow, and I do hope people do enjoy Transformers as much as they enjoy ponies, because well, it's a fun show. Why wouldn't they? Yeah, I don't know. But well, we're at our uh, wit's end right now. When I told you that this episode was going to last an hour and a half, I didn't, I didn't lie. It's going to last an hour and a half. I haven't done a stream in a while. I like talking, even if it's just the equivalent of That's not a word. posting, but eh. <laughs> <laughs> well, but we'll get a chance tomorrow, James. We'll do a review. But anywho, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshowgmail.com. If you'd like to reach us on the Twitters, you can reach the show at the MBS show. Sweetie Bot will tweet about this episode and other stuff. I'm not 100% sure what those stuff are. If you want to hear me tweet about stuff that I like and Magic the Gathering related, it's at Norman Sanzo. 
And James, where will you? Uh, you can find me on James Cork on Twitter, where lately I have been sharing my artwork. That can be found on jamescork.dvnr.com. And if you want to check my Ask Pony blog, go to askmoviesslate.tumblr.com. Yeah, there you go. That's it. All right. Bro, what about you? You can find me at my Twitters at Relicious underscore Art, where we don't talk about San Diego Comic-Con. We don't talk about Splatoon and all that mainstream stuff, but mainly indie comics and everything that might tickle someone's not-mainstream fancy. <laughs> oh, and you can check out some of my art and my gallery at relicious.dnr.com. Someone's a bit salty. I'm not salty. A bit I'm salty. hipster. There's a difference. <laughs> okay. Fun fact. I have a friend who... It's at San Diego Comic Con, and I am very jelly. Ah, now you know but he's how working. I feel. Hey, wait! I pre- I I am jelly, but I am happy for him. He worked hard. He got to go there on the company's paycheck. <laughs> so yay! I'm not uh, I'm not jelly. Believe it or not, I'm actually very happy that I'm not spending thousands and thousands of dollars to go to one event, only to be thoroughly disappointed when the guys that are organizing the panels don't want to take my questions. Oh. Oh, well, probably you go to another con, much more personal. Oh, yeah. I am definitely going to go to another con, much more personal. Brownie Scott. Ah, plug. <laughs> I'm going to talk to the guys. Let's see if we can actually get them to be our sponsors. Oh, wow. That will be awesome. That will be awesome. Yeah, well, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And like us on Facebook. You can also reach us on PonyvilleLife.com. And guys, do comment on the YouTubes here because I do read them, I do comment on them, and I do interact with the fans or people who want to talk to us. Well, yeah. So just, well, give us a comment. It'll be fun. And also thumbs up. That'll be nice. Yay. Well, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been James Cork. I have been and always will be Rolicious. And we'll catch you next week with... More episodes of the MBS show. See, I have created something stable, so I won't drop anymore. Good? Yes? No? On the level. Yay. Take us out, bro. And we will see you on the next podcast. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <sighs> what? Markiplier is calling. He wants his intro back. <laughs> <laughs> no! It's ours! Ours, I say!